come sooner or later. Uh, if you are like me and have embarked on the task of uh, describing uh, influential and ubiquitous camping gear of the 20th century with the particular focus on backpacking such as mine, uh, you're going to have to talk about something you don't want to talk about. It's this right here. This is the so-called Yucca Pack, or a Boy Scout Pack. I'm not a big fan of the Yucca Pack, I never have been. It's not really a backpack. If you've read, uh, as you were, if you have watched our video on coming to terms with back terms about backpacks, uh, you will know that this pack is actually a knapsack and not a backpack. Now what that means is uh, it is not specifically designed to carry your sleeping gear. It is designed to carry your food and cooking gear and other objects you need to get to quickly, but not necessarily at every moment. Those things are relegated for a haversack. Yeah, I know it's complicated. Now, using modern day terminology, the Yucca Pack is a frameless pack which works best if you know how to properly pack it. Okay? And that's instruction you would get in the Boy Scouts. If you research the Boy Scout manuals of the time, you'll see that there is some advice on how to pack. You'd also get a lot of advice from uh, scout leaders, many of whom would have been uh, Civil War or late 19th century military veterans. Now, the Yucca Pack is a variation on a 19th century military load-bearing design. Uh, designed to, and, and milit as I mentioned before in that other video, uh, military designs of the 19th and early 20th century were such that uh, you would, if you were on a march from point A to point C, and point C is where the combat is happening, you stop at point B and shed your sleeping gear, your pack okay, what your, your blanket and your tent, and then you go into combat with your knapsack, which has a day, maybe two worth of food, possibly some extra ammunition, that kind of thing, the kind of thing you would need while fighting. But your sleeping gear, your camping gear, is back behind you some way. And that's a theory upon which the Yucca Pack was designed. Uh, it was used uh, by Boy Scouts starting from the early 20th century when Baden-Powell started the organization. Uh, surplus gear was certainly in abundance at the time. And uh, in some respects, a knapsack with your sleeping gear attached to it uh, is superior to the uh, horseshoe roll and haversack. Now in this picture I show here, I granted it's not very good, but this is a picture of a mountain climbing trip done by some scouts in 1913 and in it we can see a variation of load-bearing equipment uh, of the early 20th century. There's some kids in there with uh, yucca packs, there's some kids in there with uh, a horseshoe roll, and I believe there's one Trapper Nelson pack in this mix. Now one of the good things about the Yucca pack is that it is a fairly easy design 
to make. If you've got any sewing skills at all, you can make one. And if you're a living historian, you can take this design and, and uh, you know, modify it to fit you. So uh, you can do that rather than buying an original or reproduction example of the Boy Scout pack. Uh, this illustration I'm showing you here appeared in about 30 newspapers in 1913. I'm pretty sure uh, they appeared in more. That's just the ones I found while I was doing my research. I just stopped looking at them. Uh, you know, even Jerry Cunningham, as late as the 1950s, was including uh, instructions in, uh, in how to make a yucca-style pack. Uh, it, it's a design that endured. You can still make one today and use it uh, even with a few modern modifications. But that's the best thing about the Yucca Pack is it started a tradition in make your own gear. Now, the three ways of, of hanging your sleeping gear onto your Yucca Pack uh, in order to uh, spend time overnight one is the uh, roll your pack and put it on top of your pack, your back, your, your knapsack. Roll your pack and put it on the bottom of your knapsack. Or make a horseshoe roll and put it around your knapsack. Uh, Sean Dyer at Mr. Dyer's Musings has an excellent example on how to pack your yucca pack using the horseshoe design. Now you can also carry this pack, this knapsack, and use the over-the-shoulder horseshoe roll. Uh, you just got to make a little bit of room for whatever's in your pack, but it can be done and has been done as evidenced by that picture from 1913. Now this pack, this knapsack really, uh, was in use uh, and marketed uh, from the beginning of the uh, 20th century until the late 1980s at least possibly a little bit further during the 60s and 70s it was heavily cloned and sold at cheaper rates than uh, than the Boy Scout uh, offerings for the Yucca Pack they were made in several sizes but if you are a living historian and you're looking for a pack, I would recommend against a yucca pack because most of these are designed for young men. Uh, and unless you are a, a person of small stature, the yucca pack isn't for you. Uh, if the, the, the larger you get, the more uncomfortable it gets because the uh, straps, the shoulder straps, are marginally adjustable and uh, there the spacing at the top and bottom here are more aimed more towards smaller frames sm smaller body frames but I've used this I've never liked it uh, you really can't pack this in such a manner as to keep it comfortable on your back. There's always going to be something that moves around there and jabs you in the, sh in, in the kidneys. Uh, and you really don't get a lot of protection for your sleeping gear. Uh, the flap is not big enough to put your sleeping gear underneath the way the Trapper Nelson pack was. But these are pretty cheap. You can find these on, on eBay, uh, ranging anywhere from $5 to $50. Uh, and the guys who charge $50 rapidly find out they are only worth about $5 or $10. Uh, you can give, if you are a collector, you should have one. Uh, it, it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's a significant uh, part of backpacking history. Millions, millions of young men first went out into the woods and spent the night or a couple of days with one of these things on their backs. But as a significant development of the 20th century, it's a dead end. 
It's the uh, final iteration of a 19th century design, and it was soon overtaken by designs like the Trapper Nelson and the uh, Bergen Pack. Uh, and when the 1960s came and we started seeing uh, other aluminum frame packs, the Yucca Pack was doomed. So uh, this, this is pretty much a shorter video than I normally do simply because, number one, I don't like the pack. Uh, number two, uh, as an adult, you can't use it, so it's it, it's not really appropriate for living history unless unless you're bringing your son or daughter along with you on a classic camping trip. Then I would highly recommend getting it because you're going to carry most of the heavy gear anyway. If you get your little girl, your granddaughter, your grandson, uh, you're going to put toys in that thing uh, so that they can have a good time. Don't bug you with a lot of whining. Uh, but... Again, as a develop, developmental uh, station in, in, in the history timeline, it's, it's a dead end. Uh, worthy of study only because it was so ubiquitous. But it's kind of like Windows. There are other operating systems out there that are superior to Windows, but everybody uses Windows. Nobody knows why. The same thing with the Yucca Pack. Okay, this ends the early 20th century backpack series. Uh, we started with the uh, Bergen Pack, the Trapper Nelson Pack, and now we're ending with the other pack, the other design, the Yucca Pack. And again, developmental dead end, uh, not good for living history, worthy of collecting. That's pretty much all I've got to say about the Yucca Pack. We'll see you in about eight days.